Hello and welcome to The Gaggle, where we challenge and, if necessary, destroy media narratives. We're continuing our discussion with um, Hans Manke on Russiagate, and we've now talked about the start of the investigation, we've talked about Papadopoulos, we've talked about Carter Page, and now I think we should um, move on to uh, General Michael Flynn, because here we, the finger does seem to point to the very highest levels of the Obama administration. We're now no longer just talking about uh, Comey and Strzok and Page and everything else. We're now talking about um, Obama, um, Sally Yates, Joe Bye. Biden. Um, so let's just, you know, get by way of background, how did um, General Michael Flynn, a three-star general, uh, former um, head of the uh, Defense Intelligence Agency, how did he suddenly be get on the FBI horizon? Yeah, no, that's a that's a very uh, good question. So the because we know when the whole thing started on July 31st, it was Papadopoulos. Then they said, well, th this guy is probably not the conduit to Russia, so we need to see who that might be. So they came up with uh, Page and Manafort. So they opened on Page and Manafort. This is early August 2016. Flynn was not um, on, on the radar at that point. Um, they opened on Flynn around mid-August uh, 2016. So from what we've seen in terms of the declassified documents, uh, what happened was that uh, this guy Halper came in and told him a story about Flynn. And then that sort of opened that door. Um, so Halper, if you'll recall, is that Cambridge professor uh, who has had his kind of hands in all kinds of different parts of the uh, the Russiagate story. Uh, so apparently what he told him is, oh, look, there's this Flynn guy. You should look at him. Uh, then uh, there's different stories about him, like, uh, well, he traveled to Russia once because there was an RT dinner and, and you know, he traveled to Russia. Okay, whatever. But I think the, the one that kind of uh, may have triggered something is the Svetlana Lokova story, uh, where allegedly uh, when uh, Flynn came to Cambridge just for a, a talk, uh, you know, he started an affair with her and she was a researcher or a, a teacher or something like that, an academic over in, in Cambridge. So um, that then kind of triggered that side of things. So they opened on Flynn. Now, of course, that is extremely, I mean, that, that's even, uh, there's even less of a predicate there than with Papadopoulos. Well, there's the, literally the, nothing. There was no, there, the, well, there is a predicate, but there's not a legal predicate. It's just that he, he associated himself with the Trump orbit. That was his crime. Yeah, true. That was it. Okay. Yeah. He, he, he came out and he was supportive of Donald Trump. And then they're looking for a crime. And that's exactly what happened in his case. I mean, my God, this guy's life has been, four years of his life have been destroyed based on but that. No, I, I think that's, that's sort of part of it. But he had had a run-in with the Obama administration earlier on, on Syria in particular. He disagreed with the Obama administration policy because he thought that he was assisting uh, the jihadis. So there was bad blood between Flynn and the Obama people. No, that's right. Um, but in terms of the investigation, I mean, at this point, we're still, it's still in the FBI. We're talking mid-August. Um, they just didn't turn anything up. And of course, there's no surprises there that they didn't turn anything up. So uh, by, the, uh, by early January, and I'm, I'm sure this, 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 uh, they, they would have known much earlier, but anyway, by early January, uh, they decide there is just nothing there. There's no there there. They closed the Flynn investigation. Uh, because they just couldn't find anything, not even anything that they could kind of make up or whatever, because the guy's clean, there's just nothing there at all. Um, and then that's when these machinations start with the uh, with Obama and Biden and, and, and so on very directly. Now, we don't know what part they might have played in all of this earlier, August, September or whatever, but the, the things we have direct evidence for is that they played a very strong part in early January in rekindling the whole Flynn thing. So the FBI said, no, this guy's clean, no problem. And then they rekindled the whole thing. Uh, and, and I think this is a, a very interesting uh, well, part Logan of the story. Act. So The Logan Act. I mean, they were, that's right. they were so, reaching. They, they obviously, they were reaching by invoking the Logan Act. That's right. So they, they, they were unmasking Flynn uh, basically during the whole transition period. There's lots and lots of unmasking going on, even before January. So you... Uh, uh, when when uh, Rick Grinnell was uh, DNI, he released sort of a list of all the unmaskings of Flynn, and there's many, many, many unmaskings. So they obviously had his, uh, their eyes on Flynn uh, probably as soon as, as Trump won the election, somewhere around that time, because they knew 
oh, Flynn's going to come in now and he's going to become national security advisor. That was known. That had been announced or at least sort of uh, you know, everyone knew that was going to happen. So, no, they targeted him for sure. Now, the... Um, the, the way that the Logan Act thing, the way they kind of triggered that was that uh, Flynn, and this was part of his role, had mm -hmm. uh, conversations with foreign officials. And that's what you do. Um, and so he had this conversation on December 29th uh, with uh, the Russian ambassador. And uh, it's very interesting what didn't happen in that conversation. So they, they talked about various things. I mean, we, we have the transcript. It's completely benign. It's completely normal. It's exactly like you would expect one of these conversations to be. But um, Flynn was blamed for uh, a, a Logan Act violation in that regard. And it was, in fact, uh, from, the, uh, from some notes we saw, it was, in fact, uh, Joe Biden who brought that up. So Joe Biden said, hey, why don't you go after him on the Logan Act? Well, we don't know exactly the words he used, but he brought up the Logan Act. So he said, oh, well, maybe we should do that. You know, so the, the thing that's just so crazy about that aside, I mean, everyone says the Logan Act is, is, is unconstitutional. It's never been successfully used and so on and so forth. But I think the answer is much simpler. General Flynn had a government email account at dot gov. Because I think it was PTT or something like that, which is the, the presidential transition team, PTT.gov, something like that. That was his email account. That means he's, he has a role in the government because the transition is a formal process. So if you are part of the government, even though it's at, in a transition role, then you cannot, uh, even if the Logan Act wasn't unconstitutional and all that kind of stuff, you cannot breach it be because you're not an outsider at that point. So I, I just think that well, the and, whole... And then on top of it, I mean, I mean, I mean, for my entire life, at least, the, the transition team, that's their job. Their job is to talk to these people around the world. I think, you know, Flynn got a little sloppy. I think he was in Bahama, the Bahamas or something, and he, he was on a telephone call that wasn't secure. Okay, you could slap his wrist for that. But um, uh, they, had, they had everything that he said. You're absolutely right, Hans. They knew exactly what he said. And in the specific, the specific telephone call that you're referring to on the 29th, they talked about is, a, a United Nations Security Council resolution on Israel. No, that's true. So th th this is the thing that, that I, I still don't understand, to be honest, in terms of Flynn's defense and everything that happened after. We now have the transcript, so you can go through the transcript, and Flynn never talked about sanctions. He just never, ever talked about it. Um, yeah, could you just explain that? Because this is a very important right. point that um, <clears throat> I'm not sure every, all of our uh, listeners understand the issue of the sanctions and the issue of the um, expulsion of the diplomats. Because that, that's, those are two separate issues, and they're always uh, mixed up. So could you just explain that distinction? Sure. No, that's right. So. Uh, Two things happened uh, at the end of December. On, uh, so the first thing that happened is that Obama expelled a whole bunch of Russian diplomats. The other thing, which is a, which is a separate process, uh, and it was, in fact, when you look at the releases that the government had on what they did, is a, a totally separate one, is they sanctioned uh, certain, government, uh, you, uh, sorry, certain Russian officials. So when you place sanctions on people, it's sort of they're not allowed to travel to the U.S. and just things like that, and they get problems with their banking and this all, uh, and their property may be seized and all these kinds of things. So they expel people, that's one thing, and then they sanction some other people, that's another thing. So these are two separate things. Now, the media has conflated these things. Uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, the, the Mueller people also conflated the two things. We can get back to that in a moment, but they're separate things. And, but the, I think the point to understand is that General Flynn knows them to be the separate things. He's an intelligence official. He's done this for, you know, 30 plus years. And in fact, and this is so, so important, and this is why I just don't understand why this defense hasn't been kind of, you know, shouted out, is during this whole time when, when he was under pressure as, as national security advisor and so on, in, in January, February, he gave an interview to the, da uh, to the Daily Caller, and it's still out there. So you can go and read it. And in that interview, he says, I never talked about sanctions. I talked about expulsions. So it's not only that we're kind of making up excuses now. He knew at the time. He said it at the time. He said, those are separate things. We did talk about the expulsions, and I told the uh, FBI we talked about expulsions, but we never talked about sanctions, and we didn't. And, and we have the transcript, and we know that, that he didn't. So... This is, I, I don't understand why, you know, on, on the Flynn side, on the defense side, they haven't really pushed this point because it's such yeah, an... But Hans, the thing is, is that 
if you could clip Flynn's wings really early, first of all, it's a shot across the bow, okay? Uh, and, and plus, you're right. I mean, he had, Flynn had issues, uh, a lot of issues with a lot of people, particularly some members of the Obama administration. But it, for me, it, it's more of like uh, the symbolism of taking out, you know, your national security advisor in the first few weeks of your administration. It, remember Chuck Schumer, you know, the, the, the intelligence community knows how to get to you six ways to Sunday. Okay. This is that kind of atmosphere we're in. And I think it was really a shot across the bow to Trump that you better get in line. Remember what he said about the CIA. Uh, even you know, right? What was it? Right before the um, the inauguration, or right after? But I mean, you know, the intelligence community—they had their ears per, uh, perked up, okay. And I think Flynn was a their perfect target because that was a warning. And then, and on top of it, but I, I think Flynn, that's, yeah. And Flynn, because he had issues with his former employer and the, the, the Pentagon, he would be able to figure out what they were doing. They would end up, and he would end up, because he was smart enough, he understood these operations, that he would be able to backtrack and say, oh, but you were doing this and this, and who's this? I, I know who he is, I know what he does. See, he was, he was somebody that would be very, very dangerous to them if their operation didn't work, because he knew, quote unquote, parenthetically, where all the bodies were buried. Right, I, I just, I and I just want to add it. to that, that the, on the January the 5th conversation, which had Obama in it, so this is a very big deal, this is Obama, Biden, and that's when Obama said something like, we need the right people in charge of this investigation. Now, it, it seemed like Obama was setting out to frame the Trump administration, that this is it, we're just gonna cook up this uh, phony baloney uh, legal matter and then once you're caught up in an investigation, then there's possible obstruction of justice, lying to the FBI, and it just could go on forever. You know, and it worked. The permanent shadow. It worked. And it consumed the country for three years. No, I think that's exactly right. So the, the word I like to use in, in what the Obama people did and Obama himself did is sabotage. I think they sabotaged the, the transition in order to eventually try and get rid of Trump. Um, I'm not sure every part of that plan was kind of already set out, but uh, as, you, as, P as Peter said, first get rid of Flynn because you, you get so much by getting rid of him. He's not only shot, shot across the bow, as Peter said, he's also a very, very important person in, in, in the administration. And he's, the, is, he's Trump's confidant, the guy who connects Trump to all these intel things. He can tell Trump what it's like. Wait, and what happened instead, you got McMaster. McMaster didn't tell Trump anything about what it's like. So, you know, Trump lost that one guy who would have told him what's what and, and, and all, of, all the other reasons you mentioned. But I do blame the, 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 the Trump people in general for just being very naive about the whole thing. Yeah. So after the, uh, this, this conflation, especially with the sanction and the expulsion. So after Flynn um, uh, uh, talked to Pence, uh, Sally Yates went to Pence and said, oh, Flynn lied to you because we have transcripts and he talked about sanctions and he told you he didn't talk about sanctions. So it turns out Flynn told the truth the whole time and Yates lied to Pence. So why would Pence she, she believe lied Yates? Under oath. She lied under oath. I, re I remember watching it live. She lied under oath. So, but the thing again, and, and I, I just think it's naivete where, uh, and they're all new in this role and whatever. So the acting attorney general comes to Pence and says, Flynn lied to you. And he just believes it. And, and I think, uh, you know, I, of course, if he could have a redo, I'm sure Pence would like to redo that. But uh, why do you believe Yates over, Penn, uh, over Flynn? I, I, you know, the, the, it's very unfortunate that, 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 uh, that those kinds of things happened. And, and then from that, we have to keep in mind, you know, Jeff Sessions recused himself. See, these things going on. See, it's like taking each one out, okay? And, 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 and definitely sabotage. That's the word, you know. Go for Flynn, go for Sessions. That's exactly what they were doing. And, it's, it's it's not just, yeah, that's right. and it wasn't just Pence, but Don McGahn, who that's was right. the White House counsel, was also extremely naive in his conversation with Yates yeah. because he, yeah. was, uh, he was a little baffled by what she was getting at. Uh, but eventually she prevailed, uh, even though he thought, what the hell is she talking about? But she prevailed. All right, unfortunately, Trump as well, because remember, Trump went and said uh, uh, the national security advisor lied to our vice president. Yeah. But she didn't do it. This brings to an end, uh, this part of our discussion. Uh, remember, if you like the gaggle, uh, like, share, and subscribe. We'll be back soon.